Day 183. Russian Defense Minister admitted that Russian forces are not capable of developing large-scale assaults. Officially, he announced that Russian forces will further slow down the pace of their operations in Ukraine in order to minimize civilian losses. However, it is clear that the problems with the logistics and lack of manpower have really started to set in. At the beginning of the war, the Russians engaged around 200,000 soldiers. Thousands of them were killed and even more have been wounded, while more soldiers do not come in for substitution. The Russians launched this partial mobilization where each region should create one battalion. Given that there are 85 regions in Russia, this means that by the end of the year, the Russians plan to add from 40 to 60,000 troops. This will hardly change the dynamics and the pace of the war. If the Russians do want to develop a major offensive, as they plan to take Kharkiv in a pocket or Donbass or Mykolaiv, then they need at least double of what they have right now, which looks impossible without general mobilization. And general mobilization would quickly make Russian population understand that this is not a short-term, small-scale operation. And I also want to say a few words about their claim that they are trying to reduce civilian losses. A slow-paced offensive minimizes civilian losses per day, but not per war. So not only thousands of civilians died because of Russian invasion, but many more will die because Russians were unprepared for conducting this invasion. When it comes to the fronts, in the east there are some interesting developments. In the Barvinkova Slovens direction, the Russians conducted an assault in attempt to improve their tactical position around Dolina, but were rebuffed. They also conducted a combat reconnaissance operation around Novodmitrivka, so after short engagement they pulled back. Newly observed and geolocated footage of artillery exchanges between Ukrainian and Russian forces north of Slovyansk indicate that Russian forces are likely occupying positions within the Sviatihore forest and have not yet crossed the Siversky Donetsk river around the hills. The footage also shows Ukrainian troops striking Russian positions in densely forested areas about 22 kilometers north of Slovyansk. Unusual activity was recorded near Stary Karavan. This area was very quiet for the last almost three months, but today the Russians tried to improve their tactical position here, so we'll see what this will lead to. In the Sivir's direction, the Russians did not conduct any confirmed ground attacks and continued air and artillery strikes on Siversk and surrounding settlements. In the Solodar direction, the Russians recently made another attack to advance towards Vesela in order to strike Ukrainians in the back. Some also speculate that the Russians will attempt to get to Rozdolyevka in order to strike Solodar from the north. When it comes to Solodar, positional fights in the central part of the town continue, and no changes have been reported. Because the fights inside Solodar are very tough, the Russians try to improve their tactical position by conducting assault actions in Bakhmutske, however, this time without success. In the Bakhmut direction, the Russians continue throwing all of their reserves in an attempt to finally crack the Ukrainian defense in Kodema, but the Ukrainians effectively used their powerful fortifications and inflicted enough losses on the Russians to force them to retreat. In the southeast, the situation is not as bright. Today the Russians started to intensely shell Vodyane. This indicates that the Russians are preparing to advance in this direction, which means that the Ukrainians have been pushed out of the most tactically useful positions in Pesky. Some sources indicate that the Ukrainians are still present in the western part of Pisky, but from there they no longer can effectively prevent an attack on Vodyane, so we may start seeing combat reconnaissance near Vodyane very soon. The Russians also tried to break through the defenses of Ukrainian troops in the area of Pervomaiske settlement, but they received a strong repulse and retreated. As we can see, just like in the Bakhmut direction, the Russians are basically focusing on one settlement where the defense has been significantly weakened, and are using most of their resources to achieve some progress. If you are against this war and want to support the work that I am doing, consider making a purchase in the online store UA Supporter. Here you can find a lot of products with Ukrainian symbols to not only show your support for this channel, but also for Ukraine. The link to the online store is in the description. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next report.